I think this is so appropriate because this is a prophetic word that Gina Golston gave for 2024. And Sandy sent it to me, and it, this goes perfect with that song. I know. I know. And so I'm, I'm, I know, but I beat you to it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read you her prophetic word, and we are going to, she's going to be coming again, and so is Andrew. They're just going to be a part of, of the ministry here at our house, and she says, Gina says, I will not allow the devil in any way, shape, or form to interfere with or hinder my voice, my mind, my body, my purpose, or my future. He and or his cohorts will not shake me nor busy me, come on now, with constant uh, physical ailments, unnecessary situations, and emotional entanglements. Hey. Amen to that. That keep me distracted. I resist him and all of his tactics. The blood of Jesus cleanses me of all these things that shields me and guards me as I go forward. His blood also destroys any res residual things from past situations that may think they are hidden and have escaped my healing, repentance, transformation, and deliverance with plans to show back up. No, no, no. I'm completely free. I'm completely healed. I am completely delivered. I am saved. I am strong. I am wise. I'm in Christ. I am a child of God. I have an inheritance. I will not squander it. I have a voice and I will use it. I have a purpose and I will fulfill it. I have a future and will go into it unencumbered with sickness, struggle, virus, infection, disease, crippling mindsets. Fear, insecurities, or strongholds of any form. I think she said it, don't you? My future is as bright as God can make it. And I go into it healthy, wise, wonderful, full of fire, full of the Holy Ghost, and covered by the all-powerful blood of Yeshua. I can just hear her saying it, can't you? I just love her. She just, I tell you what, the anointing on her voice just pierces right into my soul and aligns me again. Warring and guardian angels are above me, beneath me, and all the way around me to work on my behalf as they hearken unto the voice of the Lord Sabaoth concerning me and my calling and destiny in Christ. The protective, identifying blood of Jesus covers me above, beneath, and all the way around me, and it even flows inside me. It is an impenetrable shield. Ooh, let's get a visual on that. Ooh. The Holy Ghost lives and works in me and out through me. He guides me and I follow his leading. By him I will accomplish accomplish every purpose for which God has called me. I bring my mind, body, and spirit under the authority of the Lordship of Yeshua. I align my thoughts, my will, my prayers, my decrees, and my actions with his original intentions for my life. I refuse to allow other things to distract or deter me from the course Jehovah has charted for me. I will go into my future fully focused on him. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I stand complete in him with nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. I stand in full faith in God and in his Christ, and he always causes me to triumph. I will advance with an anointing to confidently conquer all opposition, overcome every obstacle with ease, and successfully and effectively live a life that brings glory to God and makes Christ known. In Jesus' name and by his authority, amen. And she has this addendum, and I think it serves us well to hear this addendum in this particular group. The moment David walked into that volatile scene on the hillside, destiny and timing collided. That moment was not just about an underdog defeating a taunting warrior giant. David 
had stepped into a destiny moment. This wasn't just about his fighting a battle that seemed impossible in winning the victory. This moment was about the unfolding destiny that was on the other side of the victory. He did not know what was on the other side of him slaying that giant. He just did what he had to do at the moment according to his conscience, according to what he knew about the covenant that he had with God. Isn't that amazing? But he didn't know that it was going to be leading to the throne. He did not know that stuff. This moment was about the unfolding destiny that was on the other side of that victory. And while David may not have had any idea what he was about to step into, you can rest assured that God had ordered David's steps and steered him to that exact place, situation, and moment. I'm telling somebody in this moment, you have been ordained by God to step into this moment. And like David, there. Well, let's just take a seat on that. Oh, my. How sweet that is. We have stepped into this moment. And like David, there is an anointing. There is a power that is attached to this moment. You may have no idea the significance of the moment, but for many, Destiny and timing have met together. And if you will obey God in this time, you will step under the power and influence of that anointing. And God will enable you to do what you could not do on your own. The anointing comes attached to the timing. And as you step into this timing with boldness and courage, to latch hold of God and obey his every command, this moment will launch you into a victory that will launch you into a destiny that you didn't even see coming. You didn't even see it coming. David didn't even see it coming. And if you've been around a while, you can, uh, you can begin to forget just living in, in the everydayness of being loving God and being faithful to what you know, that there are, there are different seasons and timings of God. And those timings do come with anointings. They do come, and we are in a really a unique time. And she's saying that if we'll recognize this time, then what will happen is we'll receive the anointing that, is, uh, that comes with this timing. And so that's what David did. He's, he stepped in to a specific time, and I just think how little we really know about what lies ahead, and we think that we, uh, we, we might think, which we're going to cancel and clear that out today, that we are just a small thing, but we're not a small thing, and uh, the battles that we fight today and have fought in the past prepare us and have prepared us for this season. So it's a great, it's a great time to be alive. Okay, well, now I told you that th this may be a circuitous route, but I'm just going to, I'm just, you're just going to, you can just connect it yourselves. Okay. <clears throat> Early on, probably six weeks ago, I heard the, you know, I prayed that I would, I would have dreams, and they all prayed, and they all laid hands on me, and I was so excited, and I was fully expected, and Diane, I had a dream that, that you and I were in that I cannot repeat. It was so awful, so I had some awful dreams, so I was just thinking, well, I don't know what that's all about, but I'm not giving up, and then I had another dream, and they're just weird, and I don't even know where they come from, but they're not, I can't say, I, I don't think that this kind of a dream would come from God, but anyway, but I'm hearing things, <laughs> so I'll take it, so I'm grateful, so I heard God say, uh, when I got up early in the morning, the light is coming into the fight, the light is coming into the fight. And you remember when I had that vision of the darkness and the door opened and the curtain went back and all, uh, and there was just this mountain of evil 
and the bottom of the mountain was crim- uh, crumbling because the, they were of the, the basis of the empire was crumbling because they're afraid. They're afraid. Those at the top are afraid because guess what? The light is coming into the fight. The light is coming from the bottom up. The little minions that have been tripped up and coerced and manipulated are coming into the light and they are afraid and they are scattering, which leads me to number two, Psalm 68. I struck me in such a powerful way. I read that scripture for a long time. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Well, listen, let is not asking permission. Well, would you guys let me in? I really want to be a part of your club. I mean that from, you remember junior high and things? Anyway. So, but that's not what it means. It's much more directive. And it should read, and it could read, God, arise and scatter your enemies. So this is what I saw. I saw light in the fight from the bottom up, trembling that mountain of evil, and God is rising, but he's arising from the bottom up. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a great picture? It's as, almost as good as a dream. Okay? Now, I, I, I wish I'd get over this, and I believe I will. I do think it's time for us to grow up. I do think it's time for me to mature. It's time for me to get over some stuff and stop some cycles. But I was having one of my cycles, and so I remember when I prayed in the Spirit and the angels joined me in my living room, and when we got done, we all clapped our hands to Jesus. And then I heard in my heart of hearts, never give up. Never give up. Well, if we never get up, we're going to be a part of the light that is shining in the fight. We're going to be part of letting God arise from the earth up. And then, and we might do this. I don't know if Sandy has a plan, but I have been doing Andrew's dreams. Uh, and we're on, on day five, four, five and four and five. They were or three and four and five. Well, they've just been the bomb for me. They have just resonated with me. And I'm so glad because I read the book. But if you just do it one day at a time and make those declarations, I mean, it's powerful. And besides all that, those scriptural references that he uses to establish his dreams are from God. They are so awesome. Now, Isaiah 8, 12 through 13 is particularly significant for us right now because that's a time in the history of Israel and Judah. That was, that's when the kingdom was separated into Israel at the top, Judah at the bottom. And um, Isaiah prophesied from Jerusalem, bottom. So um, Israel is already in trouble, and they are listening to all the naysayers. They're afraid of uh, they're afraid of the king of Dama- uh, the king of Syria, which was Damascus. They are uh, right, Israel, excuse me, and the and the the capital of Syria. They are ascri- afraid of these two entities. But God, but Isaiah is saying, don't fear them. Don't listen to their lies. Come on, come on now. Because I've got something that I'm sending, and it's called Assyria. And I am going to use Assyria, which is way at the top, above, above Damascus, above Syria. Now, what did, let me just, I was going to. Samaria, that's the other one. Damascus is um, Syria, Syria's capital. Damascus, Syria is above Israel. 
And Israel's capital was Damascus. So they're all nervous. They're all nervous about these two countries. But Isaiah says, they're not real prophets. They're not. Because I've got a plan. And if you want to just read a marvelous book of uh, chapter of Isaiah, that, that's it, which is another teaching. I'm not teaching yet. I'm just telling you what time we're in. What time we're in is to hold fast to the fear of God. He said, if you want to fear something, fear God and obey Him because He's coming to take care of the enemies. Now He said it's going to come right up to your neck, but it's not going to destroy you. I'm just saying, if you, if you pay attention, and I know you do, that there is a, an amazing amount of bad stuff. That's not what we're looking at. Because it can make you scared. It can make you do things. And let me just tell you what. If there's anything that we can learn out of the Old Testament, and Donna, you and I are going to learn this, and that is this. The mistakes that the children of God made is they made alliances with people in the natural because they thought it could save them. And instead of fearing God and obeying Him and keeping His commandments, they lined up with, whether they, maybe they lined up with Egypt, maybe they lined up with Syria. They were always trying to line up with somebody to save their selves. They did. And God said, those alliances won't save you. That stuff that you're doing in the natural will not yes. save you. And I have a preponderance to get a plan. Well, if the economy is going to crash, what am I going? what are we going to do this year? Why don't I have a new thought? Maybe the thought could be Isaiah 8, 12 and 13. Now, fearing God is not being afraid of God. Fearing God is giving him the awesome due and respect and honor and blessing and power and majesty that is his alone. And I think that because we don't have a witness in the media, that we don't, we don't get any possibilities of God, you've got to search out the news to find out what God is doing. And I'll tell you what he's doing plenty. And I'll tell you when Gina Golston was here and she preached that message on holiness and it went right through my gut and it fired me up and I said, that is the kind of preaching I need. People like me need that kind of preaching because you know what? You can get sloppy. And one slop leads to another slop. And then you end up like Mike Bickle and that whole ministry, which is in terrible shape right now. And God did tell me this. He said, Deanne, do not abuse somebody that I am correcting. Don't pile on. Don't pile on him. And I, and it's, is beyond sad, and I know that he is beyond sad. He did not think this would happen, but it is, and that is what I am saying. What we think we can get away in the dark, we, can, we can't because this is so important that if we're going to be the light in the dark, if we're going to be part of the shaking from the bottom up, then there can't be any kind of a mixture. Now, what does that mean? That just means we align our heart with God. God, let your will be done in my life. Let my life bring some glory to you before I cross over. Those kinds of things. And if you consume yourself with God, then you won't get consumed by that other stuff. Yeah. In fact, I told Don, I don't know, we, don't, we hardly can watch a movie on TV anymore. Oop, turn that off, turn that off. Anyway, so, but here's the deal. You guys, yesterday morning, after I wimped out and said there's just nothing exciting, and then I sat down and the excitement started to come because I started to remember all this stuff, and he he said to me, now you know why I know he said to me? Because I don't say things like exceptional access. I get up. 
Well, actually, I'd been up, cleaned up, studied. Huh? God is brilliant. And he has a vocabulary that I don't use, which is always a good indication it's God. Who thinks of up exceptional access? I can't hardly even say it. Anyway, so I, I laid back down and was just meditating. And as I laid there in, in quiet, um, I heard exceptional access. Well, listen, it's like a dream. It's like a dream. When, some, when God gives you something, you got to start watching. you got to start listening. You've got to start saying, what is the dot here? What's the next dot that we're going to connect to here? So that's what I'm thinking because at that, that point, exceptional access does not have anything specific uh, for me. It's just a term. So I did, I did look it up, these words. And exceptional means unusually good. Not just good, unusually good. And access is, is, the, is not only permission, it's authorization. We are going to have exceptional authority. To, to go into places, well, where are we going to go? I'm glad you asked that because I got another piece to the puzzle last night. Would you like to know what it is? Yes, you would. We may come back to Jeremiah in the end. Okay, I'm just going to whip this around. And I think I've told this story a long time ago, and it was when I was in Oklahoma City and Sandy and I were ministering down there a lot, Okay, we do split. Anyway, we are at the Best Western on I-40, and we are getting ready for this meeting, and we are having prayer, and something very unusual happened to me. I just, I don't know, well, I ascended. I, I didn't know what ascended meant. I, I just was having prayer, and anyway, I, so I got caught, caught up and I saw something. I didn't recognize what it was at first, but I came to find out what it was later on. Do you remember this? Anyway, I come up from the bottom up and I come through the sea of glass. And I look up and I look in front of me and there are three out shinings in the in the in not in the near in the near distant future and so i was at, that was my first experience before being at the at the glassy sea before the throne of god well what else is before the throne of god that we're going to have exceptional access to well i'm glad you asked because in Revelations 3 and 4 and 5, you're going to uh, see mentioned there the seven spirits of God. Now, the seven spirits of God are before the throne. And I, I just heard this last night. This is not original, but the before can be before you access the throne, you access the seven spirits of God. And they are from Isaiah 11. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And those are the seven spirits of the Lord. In Isaiah 11, it's talking about the branch, the branch that's going to come out of, this, out of Judah. And he's going to have these things. And he's Jesus, right? All of those things 
are housed in Jesus. And we have access to those, exceptional access, unusual authorization to begin to, uh, let's, let's, let's attempt, let's make a start. Let's begin to address the seven spirits of God. When you begin your prayer time, I always acknowledge the great cloud of witnesses because right up there, Betty and Margaret and Mother and Janet and Joanne and Jack, and I just name them off. All the ones I know that are there, I name them off, and I'm grateful for there. I'm grateful that Charlemagne is there, and Mr. Clean is there, Ralph and Joseph, and the triplets. I'm glad they're there. But now I'm going to address the seven spirits of God. Because remember when I said the angels came, and I didn't know if I went up or they came down, and we were in my living room? Well, guess who had to be there? The seven spirits had to be there. Because they surround and are before the throne of God. So when you ascend, when you begin to sense that you're in a heavenly place or that heaven has come to you, if you feel the atmosphere change, if you have a signal anywhere in you that something is beyond your natural ability to be on the earth as a human, you are more than a human, you are... Uh, Akanos, you are a never before created being because you've been born again and changed into another person. And so I'm just telling you, there were two things that happened when I was clapping and thanking God. And I said, I will never give up. I will never give up. I will never give up. Well, who's coming in and saying, that is the spirit of might. That's the spirit of knowledge. It's the, it's the fear of the Lord. That's what the fear of the Lord looks like. I'm never giving up. It looks like what Gina said. I'm fully whole in every way. Well, I'm just happy now. Can you say, I mean, I went from being bored to happy. Because this is the life that we can experience more and more and more of and we just have to ask for it if you get in a dry spot listen my sister she's so looking forward to 2024 and she's looking forward to 2024 because 2023 has been a, a year of bad health for her and when she said d i'm just so looking to next year i'm looking forward to 2024 and i said to myself really Am I looking forward to 2024? I am now because I have a personal experience that feeds my faith, feeds my relationship with God. Okay, I've got one more thing, and then if you want to have a tiny minute, you can. Okay. Well, is this good? This is good, isn't it? It's great. All right. So, uh, without turning this around, no, that's okay. The, the scripture that I want to go to is Jeremiah 27, 18a. And, and if you took a picture of that or wrote it down, it's there. But this was one of the um, scripture references that Andrew used to verify one of his dreams. And... Without telling the story, the point of Jeremiah is that prophets are supposed to pray. Prophets pray. That's what God said. If they're prophets and they're prophesying, you have them entreat the Lord. You have them seek the Lord. So here's the deal. What does Paul say in 1 Corinthians 14? I desire above all things that you would seek to prophesy. 
All that he writes in there is about the difference between the gifts of the Spirit, which one of them is he emphasizes, tongues. Tongues edify man, but they don't edify the body. Prophecy uh, edifies and exhorts and comforts the body. So he said, I wish that you all would seek to prophesy. Well, guess why, in light of what we're understanding, is that if you have a connection with God and you speak it out, then everybody, including yourself, can seek God. It is a weapon of our warfare. It is a spiritual weapon that the mature can use because you have to have discernment. And you don't listen to everybody. Everybody is not your prophet. And but but there begins to be a wit a witness in you. And as as we go forward into 2024, I'm just going to encourage you to seek to prophesy. Yeah. Practice at home. Pra prophesying is hearing. Yeah. Hearing and speaking. Yeah. And some of you don't like to speak. <laughs> and some of us talk too much. So what it is, it's about maturing so that those of us who don't like to speak realize that this is the will of God that we would seek to prophesy. It's what Paul said, seek it, desire it. We don't think anything about praying in tongues at home. Why don't you, why don't you prophesy at home? Why don't you get with the angels and clap your hands and say, I'll never give up, I'll never give up. Because prophecy, unlike um, some kinds of prayer, it's really more declaratory. That's what I just read. I read what Gina declared. And that, that came up out of her hearing. And she prophesied it. So, happy new year. We can we can all be we can all be excited. Yes, we can. And um He says desire earnestly to prophesy. So, let's just let's just just put up a hand. Put up a hand and say, God, this is what your word says, <laughs> that I will desire mm -hmm, to prophesy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.